Yeah, I keep forgetting how ugly I am. I took this off in my sleep last night. Fuck, now I can barely see. Old, fat, needing glasses. More effort required. F. Fuck, now. You look at Iggy Pop. I think I have an advantage if I had a nice, you know, body and hair. <laughs> I'm talking about losing a lot of this chunkiness and then I can work on... The... Anyway, for today, I'm going to be peeling this off with my fingers, cleaning it with soap. It is the wrong colour for me, but I have been wearing it for a while. So, I was thinking maybe I'll dye it, but then I'd have to dye every single hairpiece the same colour for the next foreseeable for the future. And I'd probably have to dye my own hair because it might not match. And then I'd have to keep dyeing my hair forever. So, maybe I won't dye it. This is the piece that I got from uh, Curve Hairpiece a while ago. So, I was getting on. This top edge here is because. I cut it, I cut the stencil too big, and then, um, yeah, I cut off the excess while I was on my head. Not well. I obviously don't know how to do that properly. I'll peel this off, I'll pre-glue the whole thing, and then I'll smooch it onto my head after it's been pre-glued. Alright, so, first thing, Alexa, turn on the studio light. Damn, that's nasty. Start in the corner with your thumb. Just with the, the the thumb, the fingerprint, the print itself gives you some grip to begin with. Make sure you got some of these standing by. Clean your hands constantly. Alright, so just gonna this. See that bit there, how it's wetter there? That's harder, but it doesn't matter. You're better off waiting for it to dry. So if it's, you've just taken your hair piece off your head, it'll probably be melt, the glue will be more melted because it's from your body heat. So you're probably better off waiting a bit. Sometimes it's harder than other times. But this is a laborious process and there'll be lots of residual glue on there, especially if this has been taken off and put on a bunch of times. So I finished picking off all the glue. Took about half an hour. I'm just doing this. There is still residual glue all over it, so at any, nearly any point on this hairpiece, the, the hairpiece will stick to my finger. I've never really fully cleaned one before. It seems too hard. As you can see, in terms of 0.03 millimeter poly, it hasn't deteriorated along the front hairline but places back here where I've taken to it with scissors I basically hacked it because the stencil wasn't correct in the first place I find it very difficult to place the temple points and the back center down on my scalp even though it's easiest for me without having to have proper visibility I mean I can look at my head front on, right? Let me look at you. I can look at my head front on in the mirror. So I've, I've got a huge advantage over most people who are wearing a hairpiece. Because this is not that hard to see front on in the mirror. Other people have hairpieces that go all the way back to there, right? They're at a disadvantage compared to me. So for me to have to rip this all to pieces, struggling to get that perimeter correct. Just goes to show it's, I'm not doing it properly. So today I thought, well, if you're not doing it properly anyway, why not 
simply put glue all over this in advance. Start at the front, just a little bit of alcohol or whatever. Try to place those temples there and then just flip it back. Just like somebody would if they were wearing a full top where they couldn't send it back. <clears throat> The problem with this, and I've, I've had it happen before, is that moving it into position when it's got glue all over it is putting glue all around the front hairline. So you're really messing that up and you don't want that glue there. Bits of dirt stick to it and it's a whole reason you go to poly instead of wearing lace, so. But it's faster. But the thing is, you, you can't just place it on your head first go, it will be lined up, and then that's it. You have to slide it into position. In that sliding process, you've now splayed glue all over this forehead area. So it's probably a bad idea what I just said. What would be more reasonable really is because I generally glue my scalp back here, then I place this down without glue on it onto my scalp. I could potentially leave that front hairline area, the front two or three centimeters unglued because that will give me an area where I can move it around without having to worry about that front hairline being all covered in glue because I shouldn't be that inaccurate. I can pre-glue the hairpiece back here, place that down at the back, lower that down, and then at the end, glue the front because I have this problem. Somebody was saying, they want to cut it back, put a piece of tape there, and then place that at the back. And it doesn't seem like tape is not as good as glue. Glue directly on there is what's on tape, minus the extra strip of plastic. And tape doesn't really seem to have much hold compared to glue. But it's, I know it's neater, that's the one thing, I don't know. But I just still don't think it'll work. Anyway, so I'm just going to pre-glue the back three quarters of this hairpiece now. Okay, so peeling off extra residue from this hairpiece is you know, superfluous, I think, at this point. I mean, look, I feel like after a month, these hairpieces just feel like they're on their way out because I don't look after them. As you can see, the front hairline, not stretched, right? As good as the day I got it. Hasn't shed, this piece from uh, Curve Hairpiece. Still good. Very mismatched colour for, for, for me. It's it's way lighter, and that's not just because I bleached the front hairline. It's just in general, colour number four has multiple definitions, and none of them seem the same. Well, that's me saying the same thing twice. Now I'm going to grab this. Hopefully, not spill it all over the place. Usually, I like to do this in the bathroom where it's easier to mop everything up. But I do have my tissues here, so take the brush out, make sure to get all the outer edge glues off that brush stick. Lock down. Yeah, Melbourne is under major lockdown at the moment because the new COVID variant called Delta from India somehow it mutated a bad fucked up pig. I'm not used to sitting at a desk doing this. Also, it can shuffle around a bit in your fingers when you. I think it is a different type of brush. The problem is though, any brush that you use has to either be thrown out or cleaned. And getting this stuff off anything is impossible. So it's actually more convenient to just use the brush that came with it. Thank <laughs> you. 
I suppose at this point it does look a bit neater for me to consider using tape back here, but as you saw in a previous tape video, I had problems with flexibility. The tape kind of just decided it was not going to stretch or move or give any flexibility to the hairpiece. I just don't trust it. But a lot of people do. But this is an alternative to taping the perimeter. Just gluing the perimeter. But like I say, smudging it around with, with alcohol all over it is going to cause, well, the glues to end up in the perimeter hairs as well. Messy work here. Fuck. Yeah, that doesn't ten tend to happen in the bathroom. <laughs> so I might cut those hairs off at the end. This bit here looks like it's got no glue on it at all, but it's always hard to tell. It would be... Oh. Lid just fell in half. That's always a tragedy when this starts to happen. It becomes a huge mess. I'm just gonna try to get some glue on this outer edge here. I, I never understand why bubbles form along the edge that make it look like there's absolutely no glue on the edge at all in some places. There probably is glue, I just can't see it, but I can't trust you know, that it, it's gonna stay, so. Maybe I will eventually move to tape if it's good enough around that back perimeter there. If this becomes a new way of doing things. Maybe I will. I Definitely, I think most people agree that the front hairline does require glue. And a lot of people think the back is okay with tape. I mean, obviously, if I did tiles of tape, it wouldn't be a major issue. I will consider it. I will consider it. Okay, so this is predominantly dried until tacky, right? This bit of hair over here that got stuck in the glue, I'm not gonna worry about I'm trying to clean that. It's no sacrifice. Okay, so I've shaved my shave zone. Sprayed a bit of alcohol on there to keep it clean. Don't really know if I have to put alcohol on here. Do you think I have to put alcohol on here as well? Probably a little bit. Alright. So I can line this up nicely. Zero visibility because I didn't wet the hair. So I'm gonna put my thumbs on the outer edges just outside the plastic onto the hairs. Really gently. up here so from my perspective what I'm doing here is pretty much the same as tape but because tapes less sticky as far as I can understand you could get away with not putting smudges of glue all over the place during this process in sunlight you can really see the difference in hair color can't you that's my natural hair color natural it's good here because you can see all the different lighting conditions. Big contrast, dark light. I'm gonna have to really be more careful about ordering color number four. 
Then again, I don't know really know much about colour fade with hair pieces. Is the colour washing out? Is it becoming lighter gradually and I'm not noticing? At any rate, this is a month old. I generally throw my hair pieces out after a month. You could see the deterioration around the edges. We're under a uh, lockdown here in Australia. We're, we've been in lockdown for about 200 days. We have a curfew. We're not allowed to leave the house after 9pm to 5am anymore. And they're talking about removing um, the ability for people to run cafes, even for takeaway. So, it's getting pretty severe with these lockdowns. In the meantime, there are people protesting and lots of police because people don't want to be locked down. So how well did that work? Just having it pre-glued like that. The thing about pre-gluing is the hairpiece is ready to go, right? You could do 20 of them. Just so long as you've had a piece of easy to peel off plastic. You know, in the same way that double-sided tape works. I would still say leave the front hairline clean of glue and just do this bit last. As I've said before, I don't really understand people who put the front hairline down first and then flip, flip it all back. But this seems to have worked effectively and there's no overhang. Hopefully there's not too much of a gap back here. You've got to be really careful with your stencil and your save zone to make sure they're identical. But yeah, that did work pretty well. I might end up doing that again with my other hair pieces. So pre-gluing the back three quarters of the hair piece seems to be a rational thing to do. But I am glad I did not put glue on the front here, otherwise that would have all become smudged with glue. That's not ever good. Here is a glue bottle that was all coagulated. I put 50% alcohol into it. I basically took the lid off this and poured 50% on top of the 50% glue. So now it's 100%, do you understand what I'm saying? It was that high with glue and now it's that high because it's glue and alcohol. You usually want to shake these things. They become very clouded over. I don't know if you could say it's really mixed in perfectly, but it's very low viscosity. I'm gonna try it. There's nothing to lose, there's nowhere I'm going. I'm not leaving the house for any reason. So this has been sitting here sort of infusing for about two weeks. Well, one week, sorry, one week. It's really liquidy. It's dripping like water, basically. I don't know if it'll have much stick at all. I'll get back to you on whether or not this is actually sticky enough, but I get the feeling that there's a big risk of this dripping into my eyes or into the hairs. But I'll tell you what, it's even worse when you're trying to deal with very thick glue. This is much faster to apply. <clears throat> Everyone complains that Walker Tape Ultra Hold is too thick. <sighs> um, so if you can achieve the same amount of stick with the much watered down version of the glue, plus you can extend it, the amount of glue you've got. We could potentially find that what could take Bolter Hold is the perfect concentrate. And that would be a good discovery. <gasps> well, but you would have to use a better brush than the one they give you. But once it's really thin like this, you could just probably pour it into a new type of bottle. In the past, I've tried using a spray bottle. That's really just dripping down my forehead now. That's way too loose. Maybe the one to one ratio is not the right amount. It's very easy though. It's got a strong smell to it as well. Stronger than 
usual in the same way that you would I don't know, cut into a loaf of bread, you'll smell the bread more, you know what I mean? That's what I feel has happened here. So you can see how liquidy that is. Very liquidy. <laughs> Gosh, you be careful, it's really dripping everywhere. I assumed the hold is massively reduced, but it would be an amazing discovery to see that it's still very strong hold. And I think it's probably gonna dry faster as well, because it's really just like water. I mean, it, it is almost at the level where you probably could spray it with a certain type of spray bottle. And if the nozzle was kept clean, it would probably just keep working. Obviously, you need more accuracy than a spray bottle at this front edge, but I'll tell you, this is really getting right up to the front edge without any problems. Unlike when it's thick, which does cause difficulties in getting accuracy. So I'm excited to find out whether or not this concoction is better than what they sell you. It would be so good if that was the case. Fair amount of stickiness happening here, which is not good for my dirt levels, but that's a short-term problem for a long-term solution. It could work out really well. But I'm sounding optimistic when there's no need to be. I don't know if it'll work at all. I mean, it'll work at all, it just might not be good. We'll see. So I'll leave, I'll leave that for 15 minutes. I've, I've spread it evenly enough that it's not gonna drip or anything like that. Okay, let's see if there's any stick to this at all. <clears throat> Feels minuscule in terms of its density. Like it's not dense glue. It's very, very thin glue. Might work. I don't know why I feel I need to have some certain threshold of thickness with the glue, but that is very watered down, alcoholed down glue. So we'll see if it has any useful properties. To magnet this thing to my head. No. So usually at this point, I can just brush back fairly hard at the front hairline. Not, I don't want to rip it up. I don't want to get the, the prong, the tooth of the brush underneath and tear it off my forehead, but it does have some hold. It does. Very impressive. This could be what we could do, kids. Water this down with the alcohol, infuse it for a few days, maybe. You can see it's not fully infused, it's still separate to some extent. To some extent. But you know how vodka infuses in, with things? This glue does as well to an extent with the alcohol. So, Walker Tape Ultra Hold can be mixed with alcohol. I would say not, not within five minutes. It might take days. I haven't really experimented on how quickly that can be achieved, but as I've demonstrated so far, it seems that even a one-to-one -one ratio has got some stick to it. <clears throat> I don't know about longevity yet. I've done it before though, and when I've shaken it up, it's just gone all coagulated and white. So I'd say probably don't shake it up, just turn it upside down and turn it upside down or whatever else has to happen every couple of days or something. 
just keep a couple of them like that. I mean, that's a very slow procedure. I mean, there's got to be a better way. I don't know the fastest way you can mix these things. Somebody was asking about <clears throat> itchiness and so on in the scalp. Often that's caused by fungal infection on the on your forehead. You can use this stuff. Highly recommend it. I use it on my eyebrows and sideburns. And then I use that special shampoo. If you want to get the brand off it. So if you've got itchiness and flaky scalp, head and shoulders has some small amount of property in it. But this has more property for killing, I don't know, whatever it is that's eating your head. So get sed Sebazole. Get some Sebazole and get some Dermade. They're two things that can stop you from itching and peeling and having a bad experience. You can't scratch your head properly. But you can still scratch your head like that through the hairpiece. It's not as satisfying as actually, you know, not having clothes on and you get scratching yourself. Like, that feels more satisfying than that, obviously. But still. You can still scratch your head while you've got the hairpiece on, right? Okay, so today I think we've explored two interesting things. Three if you count that I just solved your hair itch, head itch problems. Um, but I'm not disciplined about it. I mean, I should put it on every day. But the two things that are important that I've discovered today, or shown you today. One, hair pieces do only last a month because when you start picking away at the back. The other thing is pre-gluing the back is probably equal to putting tape on, right? At the end, tape probably peels off nicer and all sorts of stuff. Uh, so you might want to choose to use tape instead of pre-gluing the back. And you could see as I was trying to hold the hairs down, the brush was starting to get hairs caught in it and stuff. With tape, that probably wouldn't happen. So you might want to tape the back perimeter instead of gluing it. And then, I can't imagine what it would be like to have a bubble of air underneath all of this. I always make sure it's 100% glued down. I don't want any kind of air bubbles that would create itchiness or a build-up of some kind of bacterial colony or something. In, in my mind, <coughs> with glue squished completely, rather than having some sort of bubble of air, I'm preventing any sort of colonies from setting up their camps and, you know, having a circus in, in, in my scalp. I don't want that to happen, so I feel like I need to glue it all down 100%. But definitely, when you glue the hairpiece itself and stick it down that way, you're ma massively eradicating the problem of any sort of overhang here that happens when you try to glue your scalp instead of the hairpiece. So potentially going forward, the only gluing I should be doing directly onto the the, forehead, the, the, the scalp is at the front hairline. Of course, I'll just do that on the poly afterwards. So potentially, from what I've learned today, I may never need to apply glue directly to my forehead again or to my scalp again. That's a bit of a revolution, revelation. It's a bit of a revelation to discover that after all these years of doing hair pieces that I probably should be just applying glue directly to the hair piece itself. In this situation, first half, just do the back part of the hair piece, put that in a position Get the front hairline into position readiness. Keep it back with this and just glue that front edge and then just glue that down. The other thing, if you do do that, you can have a whole bunch of hair pieces ready to be placed on your head. And all you have to do is just glue down the front edge and then just place it down. That's 15 minutes of work every time. Never have to worry about anything else again, except cutting it. But that would be a faster way to go. Pre-gluing. Secondly, Walker Tape Ultra Hold is really too thick most of the time. I mean, just look at the viscosity difference between that one and this one that's been mixed with 50%. One-to-one -one ratio of one to one ratio of Walker Tape, Walker Tape Ultra Hold and alcohol in that one, and this is 100% pure Walker Tape Ultra Hold. That bubble, so slow. So there you go. Hope you learned a lot from this one.
Great video. Fucking well done, mate. Well done.